三月十四号，中国大陆知名人权活动人士曹顺利女士在北京的医院不治身亡。自曹顺利被北京警方抓捕之后，健康状况。曹顺利 is not the first one who died this way. Activists submitting reports to the UN are subjected to retaliation. You find that every step, you you can be、um, stopped, silenced, persecuted, harassed. I mean, her personality is this quiet strength, and、uh, strategically and doggedly to document, to, to collect all the signatures and stories, and she wanted to、um, disclose、uh, in you know corruption and uh, um, unfair um, solutions. And the more you want to express your view, the more you want to say about the. Injustice that you have witnessed, and the harsher the persecution. A flagrant case of deadly reprisal is that of Chinese human rights defender Chao Xunli. While in prison, Ms. Chao was denied proper medical attention and died last week as a result. She paid with her life for her conviction that the United Nations top human rights body would offer civil society some of the space that human rights defenders are denied at home in China. One of my daughters was going to the school in Colombo, and、um, all her friends stopped talking to her. Only one student talked to her, saying she is coming from a traitor's family. And on the radio every day, they were saying that this man has to be killed. State media said that my family should be stoned to death. Everyone, even from ambassadors、uh, to the politicians, to everyone, said, "Don't even think of coming back." When you see that someone who is known, who has been、uh, you know, known in the country, who has been in the human rights field for a long time, can be、uh, br- uh, shamed, named and shamed very quickly, everyone start to think twice. Why do I want to do this? They can deter human rights defenders from approaching the UN, from engaging with UN representatives and mechanisms, and from bringing their story to the UN. When human rights defenders are too scared to come here, make interventions. It became completely one-sided, and people on the ground know the situation. They are the people who can tell that coming from their heart. They speak their heart out here. 
States and non-state actors who carry out reprisals calculate. They calculate the political cost of silencing and intimidating those who expose human rights violations at the UN. And as long as that cost remains low, reprisals pay off. No punitive steps taken, no investigation is being even proposed at the you know, level of authority. I'm talking about the, the international human rights uh, bodies. So is it, it, the government is going to get away again. You know, how many times they had got away? The UN Human Rights Council proposed a way forward to address the problem of reprisals. That resolution proposes the creation by the Secretary General of a focal point. It was seen as a, a small beacon of hope that finally, after decades of calling for a, a more robust protection from reprisals, the international community had heard the call of human rights defenders. Really something was going to change. Uh, and, um, but unfortunately it was blocked uh, at New York. What is needed is for states to, to muster the political will to give a, a, a protection system to the UN that actually allows individuals to, to cooperate with the UN safely. I think she will be this symbol of uh, um, fighting for the, the right of a civil society to hold the government accountable for rights violations, particularly uh, through using uh, UN human rights instruments that the government has agreed to be part of. It's a human rights defenders are the people who are really fighting for all other rights in the countries. We, we, uh, we may have differences in different countries, but every country needs need human rights defenders. So far, the institutional response by the United Nations to the, the problem of reprisals has been fairly ad hoc. The UN needs to live up to its responsibility of protecting those who cooperate. Whilst there's no deterrent against reprisals, reprisals will continue.